Hi, welcome to the NFPA Link YouTube channel. This page is dedicated to answering any question or challenge you have related to electrical and life safety. And we're going to use NFPA Link to do it. The easy to use digital access to NFPA codes and standards. Today, we have been asked to cover the important points of electrical room 1000 volts or less. Let's get started. So we're going to go over here to our NFPA link direct. We're going to select system. We're going to scroll down here. We're going to find power distribution system, which is where you'd expect to see an electrical room. And we are going to select the electrical room 1000 volts or less. And the first thing that I want to point out is these hot spots. We have three hot spots in the top and one in the bottom picture here. The first one is talking about illumination. And this is crucial to be able to see to perform maintenance or operate breakers or disconnects. Electrical rooms are typically interior rooms and they can be dark as they mostly do not have windows. And they are required also to comply with the energy code, which means they may have occupancy sensors that operate the luminaire or the light. However, automatic means cannot be the sole control of the luminaire. So many times to combat that, there will be a night light or a separate luminaire installed over the equipment that is that that would likely be required to have servicing. So you'll see in this picture, the luminaire is illuminating this area. Uh, they have a switch um, upon entry, so it's not solely automatic means. The other thing that you'll see pointed out here is the six foot six inch minimum clearance, which is for the working space. And because it's a thousand volts or less, it's actually 480 volt, uh, would be three foot six inch minimally clearance and 30 inch width. Now, the next thing that I wanna talk about is entrance and accessibility. And actually, let's go down, before we jump into that, we're gonna cover the illumination real quick, and that's in 110.26D. And you'll see, control by automatic means shall not be permitted to control all illumination within that working space. So there's not an exemption from the energy code, but they do have to have the uh, light in that particular area. The next thing we're gonna talk about is the entrance. So we see this door and it swings and you'll notice on here there's panic hardware. The doors in an electrical room must always, always open outward or in the path of egress. And that is so that if somebody is, God forbid, an arc flash or a burn or injured, they only have to, by simple pressure, hit that door hardware, panic hardware is what they call it, to open the door and then they can get out to maybe where somebody would be able to see them or that they could have assistance rendered to them. And you will see that the electrical room entrance and accessibility, and we're gonna read more. And typically this entrance to the working space would have to be a minimum of 24 inches wide by six and a half feet high. Typically it's a standard door. Um, sometimes you might uh, run into something. The other item to note is that the equipment door shall not impede the entrance to or egress from that working space. And there are other times that that working space may require um, additional entrances or egresses from it. The other thing is that this entrance and egress must be 
there for maintenance to operate the breakers or disconnects. If you have a multi-occupancy building, all occupants must have access to their overcurrent protection or the breakers that control their occupancy. That is, unless the electrical room or the enclosures are locked, which means they are considered to be accessible only to qualified persons. So they only want qualified persons accessing, accessing those so that people do not get hurt. And you'll see that there has to be, and we'll talk about the access to the occupants. Um, they would have to be under continuous building management as well as having qualified persons. And that's covered down here in 11026F. Electrical rooms or enclosures housing electrical apparatus are controlled by locks shall be considered accessible to qualified persons. Now this is out of the 2020 code. The other the next thing we're going to cover is the listed equipment. All of the equipment that is installed in the electrical room is to be listed by a qualified testing laboratory. Um, some of the equipment may be reconditioned and that has different aspects that would have to be uh, followed. So you would want to consult the code on that. We hope that answered a lot of your questions about electrical rooms, a thousand volts or less. Be sure to visit nfpa.org forward slash link and give Link a try if you haven't already. As you just saw, Link is truly a window to productivity.